Ms. Rahayu. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Over the past few years, the world has seen many shifts and changes, changes which fundamentally affect our economies and way of life. It became clear that it could not be business as usual for Singapore, and there was a need for the government to chart out a transformation plan for our economy and our people. This came amidst addressing all the daily challenges of Singaporeans, like increasing cost of living, an aging population, health care costs, concern over social inequality, and struggles of the sandwiched class. The daily struggles are real and support needed to be given, but there was also a real need to nudge our people and our businesses to evolve so as to be prepared for the changing times and to ensure a sustainable economy for the nation. This year's budget has built on the past efforts to transform the economy and support Singaporeans through the changes. In a quick sensing exercise by REACH after the budget announcement, Several people gave feedback that this year's budget is a compassionate one, which makes provisions for those in need. There are clearly different views on the budget, but the general sense was that it was generous in many ways, leading many to ask if it, was, if it is an election budget. I believe that this, is, this budget is a comprehensive one, which seeks to address current concerns that have been raised by Singaporeans, but yet stay on track with the economic transformation which Singapore needs to undergo. The approach taken by the government in giving social support has always been a targeted one, seeking to focus attention where support is really needed and to provide a solution that is sustainable. Often it is a calibration and it is sometimes hard to say if the help given is sufficient. Over time, after implementation, upon assessment of whether the support given has achieved its desired outcomes and upon review of changing circumstances, there may be a need to adjust <coughs> policies and schemes. It is imperative to ensure that the implementation of the various policies and schemes translate into effective solutions for people, and there is always room for improvements. I am therefore glad to see the willingness of the government to make appropriate changes when necessary. On this point, I laud the announcements on the Community Health Assist Scheme, CHAS. I had on previous occasions in this House asked for a review of CHAS. Many members and I have highlighted the challenges faced by the elderly and the concern about recurring health care costs. Charles was one scheme which could alleviate some of these issues. I am happy to note that there will be enhanced subsidies that would benefit more people. For the budget to completely achieve its desired outcomes, everyone needs to play a part. This sense of responsibility and ownership is necessary if Singapore is to survive. The community needs to come together and do its part. We have many schemes and programs in place, but there will always be gaps and those who fall through the cracks. The community plays an important role to complete the support network and close the gaps. There are many examples of people who have stepped up and took ownership by being the change that they want to see. Minister Heng spoke about the SG Cares movement, and I'm happy to hear that there will be efforts to continue building on this movement. It is common knowledge that there are many examples of everyday heroes who also contribute towards our growth as a community of care and contribution. I would like to share a few stories. One of these heroes is Magdalene Ong, the mother of 14-year-old Seamus. Seamus was diagnosed with mild to moderate autism when he was 18 months old. Magdalene was relentless in sending Seamus for therapies and treatments with the desire to find out his interests and gifts so that she could support him. Seamus turned out to be a talented artist. Empowered by this experience, she felt the need to do something for special needs, family, special needs children from underprivileged families. She started organising sessions for many families with special needs children to expose them to art, music and sports. I was introduced to Magdalene by one of my residents, Anita, who told me that the group needed a space. I was more than happy to offer a room at the Bukit Batu East Community Club. The best part of the story is that the group has since formed a choir called the Singapore Special Voices. Since last year, they have been going to places like Alexandra Hospital and Bright Hill Evergreen Home for Dementia to spread cheer to patients and the elderly. Magdalene believes that the children can give back to society in their own way and is taking the effort to make that path for them. Another example of someone who has stepped up is Koko On Jiaxian. Koko is a young environmentalist who is a resident of Bukit Batu East. In 2016, she started Project Become, which aims to reduce single-use waste by engaging with businesses, organisations and members of the public. One of the programmes under this project is the CNY Container Donation Drive. Coco and her fellow volunteers collected plastic cookie bottles from the public, washed them and donated them to various beneficiaries for reuse. 
the beneficiaries included bakers, eco-enzyme makers, gardeners, handicraft makers and zero waste stores. In December 2018, this effort diverted 563 containers from going to waste. I would also like to mention Siti no Mastura, the winner of the Straits Times Singaporean of the Year 2018. In 2013, she started a non-profit group, Back to Basics, which, refer, which, Back to Basic, which, refers, which delivers free groceries to beneficiaries such as homebound elderly. Noor is also a co-founder of Interfaith Youth Circle, which seeks to promote a better understanding of the role that faith can play in an increasingly divided world. Do you see the common thread in the stories I have shared? These community heroes are all women. That is not to say that there are no male heroes, but I would like to take this opportunity to celebrate the efforts made by our women activists and volunteers. There are many out there. They have defied traditional expectations and made great strides to change society's preconceived notions and habits. We should continue to support them in this journey. I'm particularly heartened by the announcement of the CPF top-up of um, up to $1,000 for Singaporeans aged 50 to 64 years old who have less than $60,000 retirement savings in their CPF accounts. This would greatly benefit many older women who were primarily caregivers who left the workforce early and hence do not have much by way of CPF savings. They worked hard to support the dreams of their children and sharing the bicentennial bonus with them is a meaningful way to recognize their contributions. On this note, I would like to touch on the status of women in Singapore. While women here have access to education and jobs and we have representation of women in many key positions in leadership, there is still much that we can do. For example, there is some way to go to close the wage gap between men and women to support women who return to the workforce after having children or when they transit from care their caregiving roles by reducing structural barriers and to empower women to take up leadership positions. In doing all these, beyond setting numerical goals, it is important to get the whole community, men and women, on board to change cultural mindsets and progress together. Deputy Speaker, allow me to say a few words in Malay. Banyak perubahan global yang boleh kita lihat selama beberapa tahun kebelakangan ini. Perubahan ini akan merubah ekonomi-ekonomi dunia dan memberi kesan kepada kehidupan masyarakat kita. Pemerintah sedar akan hal ini dan perlu membuat persediaan untuk merubah ekonomi negara agar mampu bertahan dan bersaing di persada antarabangsa. Dan juga pada masa yang sama menyediakan dan membantu rakyatnya dalam tempoh perubahan yang mencabar. Pelanjawan tahun ini membina di atas usaha-usaha yang lalu bagi menyediakan negara kita dan rakyat Singapura untuk masa hadapan. Rakyat Singapura mengharapkan pemerintah yang tulus dan yang peduli akan kemaslahatan masyarakat. Sememangnya ini adalah tanggungjawab sesebuah pemerintah. Namun, usaha membangunkan negara dan membantu rakyat Singapura adalah tanggungjawab bersama. Maka itu penting untuk kita sama-sama turun padang dan berganding bahu dalam menjalankan usaha-usaha yang boleh memanfaatkan masyarakat. Tahun lepas, Menteri Bertanggungjawab bagi Ehwal Masyarakat Islam Encik Masagur Zulkifli telah membentangkan lakaran usaha untuk masyarakat Melayu Islam di Singapura melalui M03. Gabungan tenaga tiga agensi penting dalam masyarakat kita, Mendaki, Muiz dan Mesra dengan sokongan agensi-agensi pemerintah yang lain, Badan-Badan Melayu Islam setempat, para karyawan, cendekiawan, usahawan dan individu, individu lain diharapkan dapat menghasilkan usaha yang boleh membantu dan menyokong lebih ramai lagi dalam masyarakat kita untuk terus maju. Saya tahu banyak yang sedang diusahakan. Diharapkan banyak lagi informasi dapat dikongsi agar lebih pencerahan ada agar ada lebih pencerahan tentang usaha M03 ini dan penglibatan masyarakat yang diperlukan. Deputy Speaker, allow me to conclude in English. Singaporeans are intelligent and discerning people. Having one budget with some perks will not necessarily sway people at elections. At the end of the day, the government will be judged on how it has performed throughout the, ther the term and whether it has taken the effort to make life better for Singaporeans. The people want a government that is responsible, that cares, that works hard and that is transparent. These are reasonable expectations. However, nation building and making lives better for Singaporeans require a collective effort. For us to breathe life into the various policies and schemes, we all need to take ownership. We can give constructive feedback to improve policies and their implementation. We can take action to close the gaps and be the change we want to see. 
I thank the Minister for Finance for the budget statement and for charting the plan for the nation. I hope for a whole of government, whole of community approach in its implementation so as to achieve the best for Singaporeans. Deputy Speaker, I stand in support of the budget.